This is a fluid problem. Remember, with any problem, you should always read through it. Try and pull out the important bits of information, get them down on a diagram that helps clarify and conceptualize what's going on. So here we've got a uh, fully loaded Volvo station wagon uh, with a mass of 1950 kilograms. So that's basically going to be a car I've got here. Uh, the 1950 kilograms tells me I've got a weight force acting downwards mg. If each of its four tyres are inflated to a gauge pressure, that seems like it could be interesting, gauge pressure of 230 kilopascals, what's the total tyre area in contact with the road? So that's what really what we want to find, the total tyre area. So having a look at that diagram there, I can see from Newton's uh, second law that uh, I'm in free fall. Uh, that can't be the situation here. I must have another force which is balancing. Uh, that force is going to arise because the tyres are in contact with the road. So there's a contact force or a normal force acting upwards here in. That must balance the weight force acting downwards. So we can say that the magnitude of the normal force is going to be equal to the magnitude of the weight force mg. That means that there's no acceleration in the vertical direction. So the car is either stationary or it's travelling horizontally. Now that uh, normal force drawn in the middle of the car but that actually arises due to a contact force between the road and the tyres. The road exerts a force on the tyres. So this is the road it exerts a force on the tyres and from Newton's third law we know that that must be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the force that the tyres exert on the road. In fact, I'm not going to worry about the directions for the moment. All I'm going to care about is the magnitudes in this problem here. And this uh, force that the tyre exerts on the road is the one I'm interested in because that force is going to arise due to the fact that there is a pressure inside the tyre. Now, to remind you about how pressure and force uh, relate, let's recall the definition of pressure. It's force per unit area. And I'll also remind you that uh, the SI units for pressure are pascals. So 1 pascal is equal to 1 SI unit of uh, force, which is uh, 1 newton, divided by SI units of area is meter squared. The 1 newton per meter squared is equal to 1 pascal. And so we can also think about the force that the tyre exerts on the road comes about due to a, uh, a pressure uh, being exerted over an area. Okay, so what I've done here is take the area and multiply it across. So that's the force that the, um, that the gas which is inside the tyre um, exerts on the walls of the tyre and, uh, and then it gets pushed down onto the road. Now we are interested in finding out the total tyre area, so in fact we want to rearrange this equation once more to make A equal to the subject. So my area is really equal to the force divided by the pressure. Uh, in this case here, that force that the tyre exerts on the road is the same as the uh, in, mag in, in magnitude is the force that the road exerts on the tyre. Remember that's um, my normal force, in fact uh, that's equal to mg. Okay, uh, now that's of course for all of the uh, all of the tyres. So we can we can either decide to treat this problem as uh, looking at one quarter of the of the weight force being distributed over each tyre and work out the area for each tyre, or we can just say let's work out the total area by looking at the total uh, weight force. So we've got mg, and then we need to divide by the pressure. And so the question here is that what pressure do we need to use? So maybe I will actually make that. Uh, into a question mark. Uh, now we're given the gauge pressure of course, uh, so you could think well I'll just put that in, but um, remembering that um, gauge pressure is the pressure above atmosphere, so in fact um, we, we deal with a couple of things, we've dealt with uh, the absolute pressure and that's equal to the pressure of atmosphere plus the gauge pressure. So the gauge pressure is the pressure above atmospheric pressure. So which one do we use? Do we need to use the gauge pressure or maybe do we need to add atmospheric pressure to it and use the absolute pressure? To answer this, uh, what I'm going to go to is a, uh, a familiar problem to you, and that is I'm going to say I've got a book which is on a table. So this is a book on a table. It's very much like the uh, idea of my tie on a road here. And when we think about the book on the table, previously we've always written that the book has some weight mg acting downwards and the table exerts a normal force acting upwards here and we haven't cared about pressure at all. The fact is the book sits in atmospheric pressure uh, so that means that there's actually another force um, as well as the gravitational force acting on the top of the book. There's the uh, force due to the atmosphere above the book uh, and that force is the pressure of atmosphere multiplied by whatever the area of the book is. Now you might think that looks like what my, my um, my tyre on the road is, 
but uh, what we need to realize is that the, the book has you know, microscopic imperfections and little gaps of air which are very uh, between the bottom of the book and the table here. So in fact there's little pockets of air which are also at atmospheric pressure and so they are able to exert a force underneath the book as well. In fact this is why you can pick books up. If you were to work out the force exerted by the atmosphere on the top of the book is if the bottom of the book was at vacuum you wouldn't be able to pick it up off the table because it would weigh like a ton uh, and I can invite you to, to go, go ahead and do that. By analogy, what I want to say then is that for our tyre, um, all we really care about is the pressure uh, that's exerted above atmosphere. That's going to be the gauge pressure because the, the pressure of atmosphere, which is inside the um, tyre, is balanced by the pressure of atmosphere outside the tyre, so we don't have to worry about that. That makes things pretty simple. So then we've got mg, so we've got uh, 1950 kilograms times 9.8. Uh, we can divide that by the uh, gauge pressure, which is uh, 230 kilopascals. So we'll multiply that by 10 to the 3 and turn that into pascals. Now everything's in SI units. This is uh, in uh, newtons. This is in pascals. So we can pop that number in our calculator. And that's equal to 0.0831 meters squared, which is 830 centimeters squared if you do the unit uh, conversion. Is that reasonable? Okay, so you should always ask yourself this. If I take that number and divide by four, then one tire has approximately, uh, say, 200 uh, centimeters squared of area in contact with the ground. Um, I know that a tire is roughly uh, 20 centimeters wide, so that means I'm going to have something which is of the order of 10 centimeters here in contact with the ground. That seems reasonable. If I deflate my tire, if I decrease my gauge pressure, this uh, term here uh, gets lower, therefore my area gets larger. That seems to make sense as well.